Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem D that is a bit guessing game from Code Forces round 846 that was rated for Div 2. This is an interactive problem but this is definitely not a tough, tough problem, rather it's a pretty easy problem, doesn't even require some sort of DSC or stuff, only requires a basic logic. Okay, so the problem states that uh, Kyra or Kira, whatever you want to call it, has a hidden positive integer n and Hayato needs to guess it. So initially Kira gives Hayato the value of CNT that is the number of unit bits or the number of set bits in the binary notation of n. To guess n, Hayato can only do operations of one kind, so he can choose the integer x and then he can subtract it from n. So as soon as he does it, the value of n is gonna change, right? And now the number of uh, set bits in the value n minus x would then be returned by Kyra, uh, Kyra to Hayato. So this is the only thing he can do. Also, if in case he uh, chooses a value x that is greater than n, in that case, the value of n minus x is gonna be negative and this would be con considered a bad request. So as, as soon as you do such kind of an operation, the value is gonna become uh, negative and you are gonna uh, you're gonna get a wrong answer for the for the question. So that is something you can't do. Also, Kira doesn't have much patience, so Hayato must guess the original value in no more than 30 operations. So 30 is the maximum number of operations you can do. It's also mentioned that, and it's an important thing to observe that as soon as you do operation of x or you do operation n minus x, the value of n is gonna change to n minus x and then it won't be reset back to n. So this is important. Then they have given the constraints. So the value of n is less than or equal to 10 to power 9 and the value of uh, number of test cases is actually less than or equal to 500. This doesn't matter actually because it's a very small number. After that, they have given how to, uh, how to interact with the system. So if we want to subtract a value x from n, we have to write a minus followed by a space and then x itself. At the end, when we, were, we are able to predict the value of n, then we'll write an exclamation mark followed by a space and then n. Over here, n is the original value of the number that Kira has or the second number that Kira has. Cool. And uh, they have uh, recommended to use a cout.flush in case you are using C++ or the flush statements in other languages as well. The reason is that sometimes your answer is actually stored in the buffer and is not sent to the system. In that kind of a scenario, the system won't actually know that you predicted a value already or you are asking for an operation. In that case, you uh, in that case, you will definitely get a TLE, right? So that is uh, something you should do. Cool. With that, let's uh, start with the solution. So what's the intuition behind it or how can I do this? So what I can say is that for any number, there are some set bits, right? There would be some set bit, let's say this is this is some random number I've taken. Now, if I'm able to subtract another number, let's say this. So the speciality about this number is that it also has one set bit. So firstly, uh, there are two constraints. So the number I'm subtracting, the number I'm subtracting only has one set bit. Right. This is something I have to follow so that it's easier for me to calculate that if that a certain bit was set in the original number or not. Now, in case the same set, uh, the same bit was actually set in my number. So firstly, I'll be giving it a number x that has one set bit. Now, in case the original number n also had the same set bit. So the answer is gonna become this, right? Or in other terms, that particular set bit is gonna become zero. And we can, in other terms, say that the number of set bits would decrease by one, right? Cool. In this kind of a scenario, when my, uh, so initially I'll know the uh, value of set bits. Set bits are actually known, right? Known. Now, if the value of set bits are decreased by one by following operation n minus x, then I can say that the set bit at x was also set in n. And in that case, I can say that my answer variable or the original value of n, which I'm gonna make or construct, should be equal to n or one, followed by whatever the bit was set or the value of actually, or you can simply say x, right? So this is something I can say that is n is equal to n or x. This is the value I'm trying to predict. I'm not, uh, I don't know this value right now. Cool. So this is the observation number one. Now it's not always the case that the value uh, that the number you're gonna use or the x you are gonna use would have the same set bit that was actually set in uh, the no original number n. So it's possible that your original number n was this, right? Let's say one zero zero zero, right? But you don't know that which uh, index of bit was actually set in n. 
also you don't want to give it a value that is greater than in itself so you don't want to give it let's say 1000 right because as soon as you give this uh, uh, give this value uh, th this value is greater than over here x is greater than n in that case you will simply get a wrong answer so what you can do is you can start from the least significant bit so over here you can start from 1 right so what would happen when you subtract 1 from this so this is the i'm just writing the binary notation now uh, take a note that these are not the decimal representation but the binary notations so let's have subtract 1 from this so what would happen so this is the answer i'm going to get when i subtract 1 from this what is actually happening over here that the bit that is just to its left and which is set now becomes unset right and all the remaining bits from this particular value till that set value are actually set now right so all the of these bit were unset so these are now set and the and the bit to its left which was actually set is now unset or in other words these are actually toggled you can say right so this is something that was all that would always happen so the first case was when the number of uh, bits was actually decreasing by 1 number of set bits number of set bits was decreased by 1 in that case i know that the same set set bit occurs in my answer this would be the second kind of scenario if the number of number of set bits actually increases or remains the same in that case the sa uh, the same bit was not set in the original number but rather some other bit was set to its left now how do i predict which bit was actually set so for that i can take the number of bits that now uh, like now have been toggled or now have been changed so over here the number of bits that were actually set was 1 right now when i'll perform this operation i'll get the number of bits that are now set is equal to 3 right so what i can say is that i know when i perform, uh, perform a subtraction operation at least one of the bit that was actually set would have become unset so in totality the number of bits that actually got set would be 3 mi uh, 3 minus 1 so this is the new bits this is the old bit plus 1 the reason i'm doing a plus 1 because i know that a bit is actually unset so in total uh, to uh, totality the number of bits that were actually set is 3 minus 1 plus 1 or in other words three bits are actually set now these three bits would start from this particular location only or the location at which the current number is actually set or the bit in the current number is actually set so in this, that case i can say that okay so 1 1 1 would be the bits that would actually be set if the number i subtracted was simply 1 right so from here i can say that the bit that was just left uh, that was just left to it right was initially set that is now unset that is something i can predict from this answer itself right so now i'm going to in this case i'm going to add this particular bit or this particular value that would be 1000 to my final answer let's try to generalize this further so the first first case is pretty simple right let's not uh, devolve much time over here the second case is a bit tricky so let's try to make it more generic so if i i have any number that is 1 followed by any number of zeros right and it could have xxx by uh, the reason i'm saying xxx over here and xxx over here is that i don't care about this i'm just saying that these are some number of zeros and these are some bits which i'm not concerned about right if i subtract 1 with all zeros so these are all zeros these are all zeros right so what would happen in this case is that this one is going to become a zero and all of these zeros are going to become ones right now let's say the number of zeros over here were actually x right so now the final answer would say that x minus 1 number of ones have increased why is that because over here x zeros directly became 1 right so there was a increase by x in the number of ones also one of the one 
that is 1 1 actually became 0 so there was also a dec decrement by 1 right so the net change would be x minus 1 i hope that's making sense so this clarifies that once i know that what i can say is that the set bit would now be i already know the uh, index of this location so let's say this index is b so what would be the set bit now so the set would uh, set bit in the original number would have been b plus how many x's i am having over here or how many zeros i am having the number of zeros i am having is x right so b plus x so this is b Th then i'll go x units from this i'll reach this particular location so b plus x is going to be the bit that was actually set in the original number i hope that's making sense right cool with that i can say that i'm gonna increment or i'm gonna make that particular bit set in my original answer also i can say set this particular bit also now i know that these bits are actually set now but i don't care about these so i'll simply move my my bit pointer from this location to this location now right because this uh, entire thing has already been computed by me the number the bit that was originally set was this and i have set that particular bit in my answer also so i'll move to the next location and i'll perform the same steps recursively let's try to look at the code maybe that would make more sense to you i hope the explanation was clear right so the code is also pretty intuitive the code says that uh, since i am i can have at most 30 bits so i'm going from 0 to 30 and then i'm saying okay so i'm taking two variables also that is the total bits and bits to left so total bits is the bits that i actually set in the system and bits to left basically denotes that in the, uh, at every time so let me go back over here so at every time i'm having a pointer b right so there are total number of bits also in the system but there are only some bits that are actually available to my left right so there would be some bit let me change the pencil color yeah so there are some bits that are actually available to my left there are some bits that are actually available to my right now i'm not concerned about whatever bits are available to my right but i'm only concerned about whatever bits are available to my left reason being because as soon as the number of bits available to my left becomes zero then i would have already predicted my answer and i would i need to uh, return at that very point in time cool so that's why i'm taking a variable that is bits to left then i'm checking that till the time my bits to left is greater than zero only till that time i need to perform this operation so firstly i'll be setting the number that i want to decrease so the number would be one to the uh, would be one shifted b number of times because i want only one bit set in the number i'm going to subtract then i'm using a query operation so i've just uh, made another method so that it's easier to query so in the query method i'm just uh, printing space uh, minus followed by a space and then x x is the number i'm trying to subtract then i'm doing a cout flush as recommended then i'm getting the value from the system whatever get value it's going uh, going to give me that would be the number of bits that are now set in n minus x right so once i know that after that i'll say that if my result or the number of now bits now that are set is equal to total bits minus one in that case the same bit was actually set if that was the case this is the case number one that we discussed in that case i'll set that per corresponding bit in my answer right answer equal to answer or bit or answer or equal to bit cool the number of bits to the left will also decrement by one and the total number of bits will also decrement by one i hope that's making sense right else if that is not the case that means that the current bit was not set in the answer or and some bit that was at some other location to the left of it was actually set in that case i'll firstly try to calculate the index of that particular bit the index of that particular bit would be given by so this is the okay so this over here gives the ch change in, changes in the number of bits so that would be b that is the current pointer plus the change in the number of bits plus one right i hope that is making sense after that i'll set my pointer to that uh, to uh, to uh, to that p particular bit that was actually set also i'll say uh, i'll set the answer to the uh, i'll set the uh, that particular bit in my answer then i'll decrement the number of left uh, number of bits to the left right now why i'm doing this why i'm not uh, uh, decrementing something else and why only this the reason is because i'm not concerned about the other bits that were that are now set because i've already moved to the left of it right so let's say even uh, 10 bits now uh, now were set after doing this operation but my pointer b are is already to the left of it so in totality i'm just considering the bit that was initially set right 
so i'll be decrementing that and the total number of bits now would be would be updated to result right cool i'll keep performing this operation at the end i'll be sure about the value that the value i've calculated is correct and i'll just print a exclamation mark followed by a space and then the answer and then i'm also doing the cout plus so that my uh, result is actually flushed onto the system it's not just available in the buffer itself so yeah, this is the solution which i submitted i hope you understood the solution it's not a tough question if uh, if you haven't understood the solution try to uh, like go through the video once again i'm pretty sure that you will be able to understand it just through as a simple logic that's it for the uh, th for the video thanks a lot for watching this video bye bye